Live from the Sweet and Snack Show. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. We're live from the Sweet and Snack Show. We're with Rob Nelson. He is the founder and inventor of the legendary Big League Chew. So, Rob, I want you to take me back to the dugout. Actually, it was the bullpen. The bullpen. Right field bullpen, Portland, Oregon. I was playing independent baseball uh, for the Portland Mavericks. I wasn't very good. I didn't pitch very much, so I had a lot of time hanging out in the bullpen. And the inspiration came. Uh, The reason the inspiration came is I had a lot of teammates chewing the other stuff, and it was kind of unappealing to me and I thought I had a teammate Jim Bouton who became my business partner former big leaguer with the Yankees and a few other teams and he said Rob did you ever try uh, Red Men I said it just never made sense to me tried it for maybe 30 seconds it was about an inning later I said suppose we shredded gum and put it in a bag so we could look like cool guys but not make ourselves ill right totally And Jim said, I love that idea. He said, I could sell that idea. I really could. And then he paused and he said, what would you call it? And it's like out of the air. I said, I I don't know, Big League Chew? That was it. He said, that's it. That's it. And you went through some processes to get it protected. Well, as luck would have it, when I tried out for the Portland Mavericks, it was an independent team. I didn't make the team. But I didn't want to go back to New York. Uh, so I had to figure out a way to, to stay in town, and I created the Little Maverick Baseball School. And kids would come to Grant Park, and the owner of the Portland Mavericks, Bing Russell, wonderful guy, said, Rob, I love the idea. Within three weeks of landing in Portland, Oregon, we had a baseball day camp. One of the kids in the camp, Scott Chernoff, was the son of a, prom- a prominent trademark and patent attorney, Dan Chernoff who I met, and we had a lot in common. We both had gone to Cornell, different different decades, but we just hit it off. And I told him about this idea, and he said, I can help you with that. Mm. So we got the trademark, the slogans, the, the what do they call it, the trade dress. And I was a middle school teacher. I didn't know any of, the, of this stuff. One of the reasons I still live in Portland was because that first month I was there, people were just so helpful. I tried out for a team. Uh, I got hit like a pinata. I knew I was uh, over my head, but I found a way to stay there. Yeah. And fellas like Dan Chernoff and Bing Russell, you all gave me a chance to find a dream. When did it start to take off? When do you see people really start to uh, take it in and chew it? Took Jim about a year and a half to find the right company. And... Uh, it came out in January of 1980. It took off in January of 1980. It was an instant hit. Really? We, we, got, we really did get lightning in a pouch. First year, we sold $18 million worth of gum. Wow. The second year was down to nine, and we realized what happened was everybody doubled up on their orders at the end of the first year because mm-hmm. they didn't want to be cut short. So we became pretty much a million-dollar-a-month business. Amazing. But that 18 million was kind of magical because the following year, 1981, the Cubs were sold for 21.5 million. I remember so you could have bought my, the Cubs. I, I remember calling my dad and saying the Wrigley family just replaced the Cubs with Big League Chew. I just <laughs> couldn't believe it. So it was it was just right time, right idea, brings fun to the ballpark. Totally. My brother Harry says that it's kind of the it's not the bubble of. Bubblegum equivalent of like a bottle of root beer. You know, the kids, it was a fantasy kind of thing. But now, MLB doesn't allow chewing tobacco. And so many big leaguers are chewing my, my gum. And I hear from them all, all the time, Corey Seager won't chew anything except original big league chew. 
He said he chewed grape in high school and they went into a slump and was ground ball grape <laughs> and all they could hit was ground balls. You know, ball players. People are look, superstitious. Exactly. And so now all he cho <laughs> chooses is original. You know, he's got the arm issue now, but uh, when he's healthy, he's chewing my gum. So the original flavor was original or was there something? Okay. Talk about some of the flavors, original, and then what, what was after that? The, the beginning was original, then grape, which became ground ball grape, and I'm not sure why I wasn't in on that meeting. <laughs> That's not a good slogan. For no. <laughs> Grand Slam grape would have yeah, worked. I there think, you go. I think somebody owned that. Uh, um, but then we had uh, strawberry, strawberry after that. Yeah. And now we've got a multitude of flavors. The, the newest we have here is uh, uh, Big Rally Blue Raspberry. And uh, it's quite fantastic, I, 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 gotta, I gotta say. But we, we've got watermelon, sour apple, uh, grape, original, strawberry. What, what's something in the journey that you're most proud of so far? I'll tell you, so I was talking to my dad who's a dentist. I tell you, he, he chews Big League Chew every day. Um, but he did tell me this, he said, you know, Rob, you have to tell him this, he's saved a lot of lives, you know, because he sees a lot of people with issues in their mouth from chewing, you know, tobacco or whatever the case is. He's like, literally people tell him he's saved a lot of lives because people opt for the alternative. So that's certainly the biggest dream come true for me, that, that what I hoped would happen has happened. You know, the, the, the last numbers I saw 1986, 55 million pounds of leafy tobacco were consumed in America. And last year it was 18. Mm. So it's dropped by two thirds. I like to think we played a part in that. Oh. And you know the thing with big league ball players, back in the 70s, guys wanted to look like tough guys, the Lenny Dykstra kind of thing with the tobacco oh, hanging out. Yeah. But, but I you think they get that effect with big league chew yeah. But here's the thing, ball players are smart now. Tobacco is a performance debilitating drug. It doesn't help you play better. It, it makes you play worse. And it shortens your career, never mind shortening your life. Big League Chew adds fun to the game. And if a guy can stay in the big leagues for another two or three years, that's tens of millions of dollars. Oh. So there's a financial component there. But I think more than anything, the thing that really makes me smile is that everybody seems to have a Big League Chew story. When I'm wearing a Big League Chew shirt around town in Portland. What's your favorite one that you've heard? Or your own? Well, just the fact that, like on Halloween, it's probably my favorite all time because our house in Northeast Portland, the kids are lined up like it was getting tickets to see Bruce Springsteen or something. It's amazing, like with the Beatles, you know? And I have had kids early on on Halloween night come and get their original Big League shoe. And about two hours later, same kids, new costumes, so they can get the great Big League shoe. So I love that story because my son Charlie, at the time he was about nine, he said, Dad, that, that's not right. I said, Charlie, that's ingenuity. If they want the grape and the original, more power to them. And both costumes were cool. It's not like they threw something together. I think I love when, when I'm just on the street or in a restaurant or something and a waiter will say, why are you guys talking Big League Chew? And George will say, well, we make it, and, uh, and Rob created it. He invented it. They, they, they treat me like a Mr. Wonka. You know, and, and that's fun. You know, be a big fish, little pond. But it's fun to know that I've made people smile. You know, Cal Ripken sent me a note on the 25th anniversary of Big League Chew. This is almost 15 years ago. And it was so sweet because he said, you know, you really brought fun to the ball yard. It's really, it's part of the baseball experience. And when you think about baseball, all the, the dead time you have out in the bullpen. We used to play word games with the outfield signs. How many words could you get out of the Fred Meyer grocery store sign? You know, that kind of thing. And Big League Chew just lends itself to that. You know, bubble gum one contest, you know, grown men, you know, okay, 25 year olds, you know, who can get a bigger They're bubble kind of thing? For no. a bubble gum blowing no, contest. For, for kids, really, of all ages. <laughs> Even dentists, who knew? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Everyone should check out Big League Chew, the new flavors, the old flavors, Blue Raspberry, uh, live from the Sweet and Snack Show. Thanks, Rob. Thank you so much. This is great. Yeah. Thanks a lot. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.